Hello crafty friends, welcome to another everyday inspiration card making video. Today's card is inspired by this photograph of a rose that I took on a recent trip to the Lost Gardens of Heligan in Cornwall. The rose reminded me of a stamp and die set that I have so I thought I'd use that plus some distress oxides to kind of recreate the photo in card form. The first thing I did was take some mixed media paper, pop it in my stamp positioner and then dust it with corn flour to remove any static or grease or moisture. And then I stamped on some leaves and a flower using Stazon because these stamps are made of silicone and Stazon works really well on silicone stamps. I did stamp them twice just to get a really nice deep black image. And then I stamped them again with embossing ink because I wanted to clear emboss over the Stazon. Stazon is a waterproof ink, so I didn't need to do the clear embossing to waterproof my inking. I did it because I wanted to have a slightly raised glossy black image that I could watercolor within. So I dipped my inked piece of paper into my clear embossing powder and then melted the embossing powder using my heat tool in my baking tray and then once that was cooled and set i smushed some bundled sage distress oxide on my glass media mat used a paintbrush to add a bit of water to turn it into a paint and then painted the bundled sage on the leaves the thing i like about clear embossing over black ink and then watercoloring is that the clear embossing because it's slightly raised and resists the water in the watercolor it acts as a bit of a barrier so it kind of restrains your watercolor and stops it going everywhere so it's just a little shiny helpful barrier i think i wanted to give my leaves more than just one color of green so i squished some pine needles or it might have been lucky clover doesn't really matter it was a darker brighter green onto my media mat mixed it with water again and then painted it onto my leaves where the kind of shadow areas would be and then i just used some water to blend it out so now i've got a nice variegated leaf pattern to colour my flower, I wanted to go pink, like the flower in the photograph, and I wanted to start light and then work to dark. That's kind of what you do when you watercolour. You start with your lightest colours and then work down towards the darkest colours. So I smushed some sponge sugar onto my glass mat, added some water and painted that over the whole of the flower. Then I smushed a bit of kitsch flamingo onto my mat, added water and then painted it in the shadow areas where the petals would be in shadow from the petals above them, if you see what I mean. So have you ever created a card inspired by a photograph that you've taken? If you have, do let me know in the comments. And if you'd like to share the card and the photo, do come over to my Facebook group and post a pic or two. For my darkest colour, I used picked raspberry and I added just a little bit of that in the areas where there would be the very darkest shadow. So around the middle and underneath the kind of second row of petals. So the shadow is on the very bottom row of petals. Once that was done, I dried my panel with my hairdryer. I tend not to use my heat tool for drying things that have got embossing on them because I don't want to remelt the embossing powder. My hairdryer isn't hot enough to melt embossing powder, so I feel safer doing that. So obviously I want to put my flower on something, so I cut a panel of mixed media paper I covered it in water so that it had a nice sheen on it. It wasn't absolutely drenched or puddly, just had a sheen on it. And then I added some bundled sage and some lucky clover or whatever the dark green was that I used. And I just kind of blotched it on so that it would spread out in all that water and create a lovely diffuse background. 
I did do a bit of mopping up with a paper towel just to pick up some puddles and some darker areas. And then I spattered on some pink before the green was dry. This is always a bit risky doing wet green and pink or red together because they're opposite each other on the colour wheel. They're complementary colours and when they mix they kind of neutralise each other. And these colours that I was using today neutralised each other into a kind of grey that wasn't very attractive. But because I was very gentle with what I was doing I managed to avoid getting them to mix and so they just stayed nice and separate and I didn't get that grey colour. Once that first layer of diffuse colour was down, I dried the panel with my hairdryer and then I used my mini smusher to smush on some of the green. This gives a bit more defined colour. I dried the green then and smushed on some pink with my smusher, again for some more defined pink areas. And once that was all dry, I die cut out all the shapes and I used my tape runner to add my panel onto my card blank. In the photograph, the flower is in the bottom right hand corner, kind of facing up towards the top left hand corner. So that's how I wanted to arrange my flower and leaves. So I spent some time getting them where I wanted them and then I used some matte gel medium. I've switched to matte gel medium because I ran out of my high tack PVA glue and I've got lots of matte gel medium so I thought I'd use that and see how I get on. The jury's out at the moment. I'm not loving it because it's not as tacky as the PVA that I use but we'll see how we go. So I stuck my leaves down where I wanted them and then I added my flower on top. I did pop a little bit a very thin craft foam behind my flower so it's lifted up a bit it's got a bit of dimension and then I added a few drops of glue under the tips of the leaves to hold them down For a bit more dimension and some subtle gloss and shine I added some Morning Dew Nouveau drops which dry clear And then I added my sentiment and I stamped in black again and clear embossed on top the words thank you and cut that out with a stitched rectangle die, popped that up again on craft foam in the top left corner and that was my card done. I do hope you've enjoyed today's video and it's given you a few ideas. If it has, please do leave a thumbs up, let me know in the comments, subscribe, ring that notification bell and I'll see you back here tomorrow for my next video. Thanks for watching, bye for now.